Tonight, it's a personal reflection that I call the walk. I remember like it was yesterday, the day that I walked my son Paul to his first day at kindergarten. As we were walking and holding hands tightly, he and I were talking about our neighborhood and how pretty the day was, just normal everyday stuff. All the while, I was thinking I am going to cry and that he was going to cry the moment we got to his school. Because that is what happened the day my dad took me to school for the first time. Let's just say that was a very tough morning for all of us, for my dad, my mom, and me. And my dad took me to the car, out of the car, and we walked into Spee's Elementary School in Winston-Salem. And I did not want to stay. I held on to my dad's leg for dear life. It was a hard moment, hard moments like the one in our gospel lesson where God sends Jesus, his only son, into the wilderness. Which is crazy when you think about what is going on, that Jesus has been baptized and God is acting like a proud father. Hey, that's my boy. Hey, enjoy the wilderness now. Have you ever tried to picture what that wilderness looked like? Maybe you think it's some kind of big desert with a lot of sand and very little shade and very little water. But many of us probably have not been stuck in a desert, so it might be hard to put ourselves in Jesus' sandals. But what if we stopped thinking what the wilderness looked like and thought about what the wilderness felt like? I can tell you what the wilderness felt like. The wilderness is like 40 days of that first day of school for me, where I am entering something unknown, having to let go of my father, lonely and scared. That is the wilderness as I define it. We all have those wilderness moments, moments that we feel alone, abandoned, and afraid, grasping for something or someone to reach out and hold us and take us to safety. When we think of how the wilderness felt, I think we can paint a better picture of Jesus and his wilderness and what Jesus went through. But at the same time, we can also paint a better picture of God. What I mean is, when we read and hear this story, it says the Holy Spirit immediately drove Jesus into the wilderness. But it never says the Spirit stayed behind. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke both say that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. No abandonment. And Jesus is not left to wander on his own. Mark says Jesus had wild animals around him and that the angels attended to him, which means they took care of him. While Jesus was in his wilderness, God was there every step of the way. When we go through our wilderness, God is there every step of the way. God does not say goodbye and good luck because God does not abandon us. God goes with us. Something that Deacon Susan and Kevin talked about earlier in the children's sermon. I want you to think about the cross and the message that that cross says to us, especially during this season of Lent. The message of the cross is that is God's way of telling all of us, I did not abandon you. I will never abandon you. And I know that God does go with us because this is a fact, because when I stepped into my elementary school wilderness, 
As I let go of my dad's hand, another hand was reaching out to me. It was the hand of my wonderful first grade teacher, Jane. She gently pried me away from my dad. Okay, it wasn't gently. She really had to pull me away. But she held on to my hand, and then she led me to my class. When I got to my class, the first thing I saw were kids my age. I saw games, I saw books, and I saw placemats for naps. Hello. By the end of the day, as I got off the school bus for the first time and was dropped off at my street, I saw my whole family, my mom, my dad, my sisters, all in my dad's car waiting for me, signaling me to come and join them. And then I was surrounded with hugs and kisses as they greeted me. And they wanted to know about my day. And I told them I had fun. And then they told me, well, guess what? You get to do it tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Actually, you know what? I can do that. Every step of that day, God was with me. He was with me through my dad's letting go, to my teachers holding on, and in my family's welcome home. And what happened to Paul on his first day? Well, I was able to walk him not only to the front doors of the school, I was able to walk him all the way to his class. And when he got there, he saw a few friends from his daycare. And he saw that his teacher was the mom of one of his daycare buddies. And when she saw him, she said, hey, Paul, and gave him a great big hug. And that was the moment I knew he would be okay. And I walked away. And I didn't cry. I didn't need to. God was with Paul. God was with me. And God is with you. I don't know where you are tonight when it comes to your faith and your faith journey. But if you find yourself in your wilderness, if you find yourself in a place, either a physical place or a mental place, that is scary, unknown, uncomfortable, I can promise you that God is right there with you. God is there in the angels in your life. Family, friends, your faith community, be it in person or online, like with us here tonight. And God is there in the wild animals. Well, we call them pets, but still, maybe you have a pet in your life. So God is there providing you angels and gifts during your time in your wilderness. You are not alone. You do not walk alone. God is with you. God walks with you. And when times get really tough, you can hold on to God and let God do all the walking. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Amen.